Hello and welcome back to Tea with Tracy, coming to you live every Tuesday at 12, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate and home ownership related. Today, we have a special guest joining us today, nutritionist and cookbook author, Valerie Pence. She's here to talk about today how when you have a new home, you can form some new habits and how to stack that new pantry to set up you and your family to have a healthy sanctuary. Without further ado, let's get Valerie on to join us. Hi, Valerie. Hi, how how are you? I'm great, how are you? Doing good, thanks for having me on your show. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I know, um, well, you are just fantastic and an expert in what you do. You've worked with so many different individuals and families, including mine. Um, to help, you know, create a healthier lifestyle and make some better choices that's, you know, definitely affects not only our health, but just how we feel on a daily basis. So um, such an honor to have you with us today, um, you know, to talk to, um, you know, anybody out there. You don't necessarily have to have had a new home, you know, moved into a new home. Um, These tips today are great for anyone So, um, but especially those who have recently made a move or are making a move, um, you're going to share with us how we can start off those new pantries fresh, nice, fresh start. Yes. And I will say when working with clients, they do feel it's very cleansing to kind of start over or if even it's just a new season, like we're moving into fall. So maybe clearing out some of the things that they accumulated, you know, in the spring and summer. So yes, it's really for anybody, but it sure does make it easy when we're purchasing a new home or moving into a new space that it's kind of that perfect opportunity to make some changes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, even before you move into that new space you're packing up the existing space to move things over um are there any things that you know people should keep in mind as they're packing up and getting ready to make that move sure so you're already going to make a lot of decisions right so you're already deciding you're going through your closet and thinking do i want to pack everything in my closet you're looking at all your furniture and thinking is this going to fit in my new space so there's so many choices being made as you're packing boxes, you're donating items and all of that. So your kitchen should actually be a part of that process. And so there's a few items that you know you may want to keep. And then like your big items, if you have, you know, a big mixer that you got as a wedding present, you know, that's several hundred dollars. You probably want to hang on to that. Maybe you've only used it a handful of times, but if you want it, at some point, it's good to keep. Right. Um, some of those things that you might think that you may consider getting rid of would be things that honestly don't serve you well in your new season. So whether that's the fact that you are buying a home or because you're just it's fall and you want to cleanse a little bit. So a couple of easy things to get rid of Tracy, honestly, expired items, take a minute, go through your seasonings, your canned goods, anything that's packaged. (laughs) If it's expired, it's time to go. I I have some viewers. I have some viewers in particular, you know who you are. Do you hear this? So, right, you would know those people that are holding on to the old stuff. It's like, oh, but what if I need it? Right. If it's expired from a nutritional standpoint, um, it's not even good for you at that point. Nutritionally, right. all of those active things that work really well in your body are kind of gone at this right. point. So, give yourself a favor. Just pitch the expired items. Right. That's a big task. I know it is, but take a few minutes in your kitchen. Just get rid of those to start. And you'll be happy to have that many fewer boxes to have to actually pack up and move then so right you'd be shocked how many things you pack you pull out and you're like why did I pack this like (laughs) right I don't need it so expired items are a good one yeah um another thing that would be easy to get rid of and from a health standpoint would be anything that is scratched non-stick so a lot of us use um, these great nonstick options. From a health standpoint, they're actually not ideal for our wellness, but certainly the worst ones for us would be those that are already scratched. Okay. So if you have some type of scratched Teflon or scratched nonstick, 
time to let those go. All right. So those those have no place in your new. You home. have permission to go shopping for some new <laughs> uh, pots, pans, you know, <laughs> cookware. I mean, you're going to go shopping anyway. Right. So true. True. A few kitchen items is good on the list. Right. Yes. You know, and there might be some new colors. The handles might be, I mean, that just goes better in your new yeah. kitchen anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, for sure. All right. So those are a, a great couple of suggestions. Um, so it can help lighten your load when you're looking at, yeah. you know, your house and your kitchen and feeling a little overwhelmed. Just start tossing some of these things. <laughs> so. Now, right. anything that's plastic that has melted, right? So plastic's not a healthy way to go. So if you've got <laughs> things that you are stained plastic that you're holding onto a ton of Tupper that have no lids, right, or you're not right. sure where the lids are, um, they make a lot of great glass containers now mm -hmm. um, that are much more helpful for you rather than storing or heating food in plastic. So that's another thing that probably like get ready to pitch some of that plastic, get some cheap wooden utensils are much better, and then some glass containers to store some of your items. Okay, so there you go. Yeah, that's great. And you know what, I will say as having I recently had my kitchen redone, so I had lots of choices to make as far as what stays and what goes, and it feels right. so good, especially when you're talking about that Tupperware. Where's the lid? I haven't seen the lid in years for this one. I don't know. In the recycling. Recycle <laughs> so, it. Yep. Yes, recycle it. Yeah, for sure. So, so okay. So someone's packed up now. They've tossed everything that's expired, has scratches, is no longer serving a, a healthful purpose. Um, right. What do you suggest they they now get to put in their new pantry? What are some good staples? Sure. Yeah, so I'm I'm physically in my pantry. Okay. Um, I'm going to be honest. I did not stage this. This is straight up what my pantry looks like. Oh, I know. I got, I, know. <laughs> I got my crack pot. I got my water bottles, right? Like, and my pantry staples. So a lot of people think like, oh, you probably have nothing packaged, Valerie. Everything is fresh from a farmer's market. And it's like, honestly, I could put together a full, healthful, nutrient-dense meal straight from my pantry and okay. nothing else. Okay. Um, every, every day, my kids might get bored of that, but I could certainly <laughs> come up with it. And when you're moving, you definitely are not going to jump into a five-course meal in your kitchen. There's so many things to do. So having some kitchen staples right there in that pantry make it so much easier in those weeks um, when you first moved in and you're living among a ton of boxes. Right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, where you, yeah, you just need something that you can grab and go and you're not necessarily going to the grocery store, store to stock up on all those fresh fruits and veggies. Right. So, right. You, you get to that. Right. Like early yeah. on, not, yeah. not so much. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so some easy things to keep on hand and also affordable. So one of okay. my biggest things, anybody that's worked with me will know that my biggest thing is you don't have to be wealthy to eat healthy. And a lot of times we hear that it's like healthy is for the wealthy. And I, I would really um, debunk that idea. It's, it's really not. Although if you're trying to substitute regular Doritos with organic Doritos, <laughs> <laughs> that's going to yeah. be pricier. Right. So it's not exactly what I'm talking about. Right. But there's a couple of kitchen staples that are affordable and should always be part of your healthy pantry. So you can see behind me right off the bat, this whole area right here is mm -hmm. herbs and spices. Yeah. So you believe it or not, fresh herbs are wonderful, but there's actually some dried herbs that are more nutrient dense because they were dried. Okay. So you always want a mixture of dried and fresh herbs herbs um, in your in your cooking. So just some staples, definitely some garlic, you need salt and pepper, maybe some basil, some rosemary certainly coming into our winter months. Just a, a easy blend. You don't have to yep. go crazy. Um, and anything that's super expensive, like say saffron, you might want to wait until you actually have a recipe. <laughs> right. right? Don't right. bother with the expensive stuff. Go with the kitchen staples, but have those ready to go. And of course, I'm an advocate for organic. Yes. Um, Trader Joe's actually sells some great affordable organic seasoning. So that's a good place to start. There's really not, I found there's not a big price difference in the, you know, no. organic versus the the standard. So, um, and it, it's kind of funny, you know, seeing your, your spices behind because years ago when my family first started working with you, I think I only had salt and pepper. 
And now when I had my kitchen redone, I actually have a full pull out for all of my spices um, just because, you know, there's just so many that I'm using now. Turmeric is one of my favorites. I put it in my scrambled eggs every single time. So, Oh, well, you're just an overachiever with the turmeric. I'm just trying. That's really good. (laughs) A full disclosure, it's a strong flavor. It is super good for you. Very anti-inflammatory, but it's strong. So I, I maybe I'm just job. used to it now. I love it. So <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah. I'm so glad I had that effect on you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but a couple other items too, you definitely want to make sure you have on hand. I always like things that are jarred. So in a glass jar and even believe it or not, cans. People often ask me like, is canned food even healthy? Um, quite honestly, anything in a package, You just got to get good at reading your labels. And what I mean by getting good at it is doing it in general. Mm -hmm. Most people look at the front of a package and they don't bother, like this would be the front. They don't bother turning around to see what's actually in there. And a lot of times when they look, they're like, oh, shoot, I was... I thought it was just this ingredient. It's actually a whole list of ingredients. So getting good at looking at what you're going to get. But personally for me, I always have things. These are sun-dried tomatoes. I always have sun-dried tomatoes on hand. And this is give or take. I always have beets. They go in my smoothie. Some people love beets. Some people don't like beets. I love beets. Um, but it's really easy to put it on a salad. Um, roasted red peppers. This is always in my pantry. You can put it on a sandwich, on a burger. You can blend it, puree it in a soup. You can easily put it on top of tacos. Like there's so many great things you can do with jarred sun-dried tomatoes. That's very important. I always have, believe it or not, I do buy fish in a can. So this is wild caught salmon, sockeye salmon, which is really good. Very simple to make a whole meal out of something in a can. Okay. Um, And with your other canned items, honestly, like I always have canned beans as well. Mm -hmm. Just look for the organic or the ones that say non-BPA liner, because that's actually the most dangerous thing about using canned goods is that they have this non, they have a BPA liner, which is that plastic compound we've heard so much about. So just be mindful, read your labels, make sure you know what's in those canned goods so you can properly stock your pantry well. Yes, I know. Yeah, the beans. And uh, I know you you suggested uh, working with our family, also having the organic chicken, st- you know, the stock yes. um, and having those things always on hand. I am, I don't know if I'm surprised anymore, but how often it's like, oh, I need this for a recipe or, and I don't cook very often. Just keep that in mind, people. I keep it very simple. <laughs> a lot of crock pots and, you know, especially this time of year, but you know, but it's, yes, but it's there. It's there when I need it. Um, and those things have a decent shelf life. So you can go and stack up and get a few things, right. And they'll be there when you need them. And honestly, with your chicken broth. So a lot of times people's big question for me is, okay, Valerie, you're always talking about cooking for your family. I'm solo and I'm cooking for myself. So what do I do with this broth when I open it? I only need it a little bit. Broth is really cool because you could freeze it. And if you really wanted to get crafty, you can put it in ice cube trays and just pop out however much broth you need if you're cooking individually. Oh, that's Um, great. Because I got a lot of questions yeah. about individuals since I talk about my family cooking. Right, all the time. right. <laughs> like, don't forget about us solos. So, yeah. Well, I haven't. I hadn't run into that problem, but now with my two daughters off to college and there's just my son and I. Um, yeah, I don't need quite as much. Although he can still plow through the food. So. <laughs> So, That's right. But yeah. you know, another I'm thing that, that I've done with some of the extra broth that was your suggestion, whether it's chicken or the vegetable broth, is using that when making my rice. So, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I like so that. I'm glad, I'm glad you brought up rice. So, here's my canister of black rice. You can see I need a little refill. It's only about half full. Yeah. So, I keep some staples in these glass jars, which it's cute. Yeah. And I always have plenty on hand. So, my black rice, I've got my lentils like that, I have quinoa. So I keep them in these big glass jars. It keeps them fresh and it's it's visible. So I'm I'm looking at it and it's like, oh, I can make rice, I can make lentils, I could that's just sitting there kind of ready for me. So right. um, yeah, so you see, good, you block. know it's there and it looks good. So for those who are really into home organization and like the home edit, like <laughs> you're like right in line there. So <laughs> yes, and it's a, a good way to kind of organize it and I know what I have versus having them kind of buried in my pantry. Right. I have very shallow pantry shelves. So I had to get creative and I like my glass jars. I can see them. It stays yep. fresh. 
and I know when it's running low and I can restock. That's awesome. That's awesome. Anything else? Is there anything else that uh, that you that you want those you know viewers to know? I mean, we've covered quite a bit today. <laughs> yes, I guess we have. Um, I would probably just say, you know, before the move or before you're ready to do some kind of kitchen cleanse, just make some decisions for yourself or if you're living with a family, with your family, thinking, what changes do we wanna make, if anything? Like, do we need to keep candy always in the house or is that a thing that we just have if we're out? Just yeah. so you understand what you're actually cleansing. The expired products, that's easy, anybody can do that. But if you right. really wanna set your home up for a healthy sanctuary, where it's like, all right, at home I'm doing well. I might do different stuff out of the home, but I'm <laughs> doing well. Right. So just having having a conversation with your family or to yourself, right? Thinking, what can I do without in this new season? And then kind of make decisions accordingly moving forward. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Valerie. And for those of you that would like some more information, um, you can feel free. We'll have contact information, how you can contact Valerie directly. She does have a cookbook. So if you're wondering how to use some of these ingredients, um, there are some great recipes in there. And um, I know from time to time, Valerie does some cooking classes. So you can actually yes. go and sit and watch her cook up. and just eat it and, Correct. you know, hang out, have a glass of wine. So if Correct. that uh, if that is up your alley, then um, you'll definitely want to uh, get in touch with Valerie and see how you can participate in that. So Yes, it's fun. It's really just show up and get wine and dined. Like yes. I say it's a cooking class, but really it's a tasting class. And, and it's coming up. There's one in November coming up. Okay, so, so can... if you want to get in on that, it does sell out fast. You're going to want to make sure you, uh, you contact Valerie. So, well, thank you so much for joining us today. I think we're going to have to have you back because I know there's more we can talk about that's not even food related, but how to set up your homes right. in a healthy way and other ways. So we'll yeah. definitely have you back on again. And um, thank you so much for joining us, Valerie. Um, thank you all for tuning in, whether live or on the replay. Um, and we'll see you next week on Tuesday, t on Tuesday for Tea with Tracy. We hope you have a healthy Tuesday today. Thanks Sounds so good. much. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.